All right, we're gonna do a vowel adjustment for this John Deere Z225. So, let's start off by um, taking this off. We get these bolts out. We're actually missing one right there. And then we'll undo these two. And there's a few bolts like here, here, and then on the other side. We'll get those off so we can get all this out of the way. So we can actually get to the valve cover. All right, got that off. They're all half inch bolts. Um, put a, this is the gas tank. And it's got two bolts that kind of bolt it to this rear cover. Same on this side. And I just put board. Uh, between the wheel and the tank to help hold it up and I just grabbed a water bottle for that so there's not really any weight on this side or not as much as that one it's got I think probably a half tank of gas in it so it's got some weight in it no it's almost a full tank of gas so so we've got the valve cover off and um looks like the gasket was leaking a little bit but um let's get these bolts off we also need to pull the spark plug off because we're going to find top dead center and um, so we can adjust the valves and it looks fairly clean in there the oil's a little nasty but we need to change the oil on it but um we've got it at top dead center and just shoved a pencil in there but you can also see in there with a the light and so now I need to look up the torque or the uh, valve adjustment specs and get my feeler gauge we'll see what they're set at all right I'm gonna set the intake and the exhaust to 5,000 per the specs that I found um, and then they are extremely loose right now. This is, let's see, some, some of these I can't read. Um, let's try the biggest one. What is that? Hmm. Well, whatever that biggest one is, that's what it is. And what it should be is this right here, <laughs> this little one. We are way off. So let me get those set. It's a... Uh, Take a T a torque T20 and a 5 8 and that's how you adjust them. So run it in, loosen this off, and then run this in. Like you see, I've got it super tight now. So we'll back this off. And we'll get our feeler gauge. Try to do this one handed. It needs to be a little bit tighter. That's uh, got a little bit of a drag to it. So let me hold this. It's hard to do this on the camera. Well, I'm just going to have to lock it down, and then I'll do the, uh, you know, this is the exhaust, the intake's down here. So let me go ahead and do the uh, intake also. So the, um, the, if I remember right, the specs on these were 03 to 05 on the intake, and 05 to 08 or 07 on the exhaust, and I've got... I've got them about at 04 and 
or 004 and 006, about 4,000 and 6,000, so kind of right in the middle of the specs. Um, and they're locked down, definitely a lot tighter than they were. They were extremely loose before, way out of spec. So we're gonna um, go ahead and I got the new gasket there. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing back together. Um, Musty One has a really good video on uh, on these adjusting the valves. Uh, I think it's uh, if you look up Briggs Hard Start or something like that. Um, he explains uh, all about the. Uh, there's a little extra lobe on the camshaft for uh, decompression, and uh, when the valves get out of spec, uh, it uh, it can't push on that uh, decompression. It can't. That lobe's really small on the decompression lobe, and if you're out of spec, it won't push the valve far enough down to do the decompression. So. Um, he does a lot better job of explaining it. If you're looking for a how-to video, take a look at his video, um, and he'll explain it a little more. It's just kind of an overview. But we've got the valves adjusted, got them tightened back down. Now we just need to uh, put the valve cover back on. Before I put all the other stuff back together, I'll probably start it up and just see how it runs. Um, I doubt the battery's got enough charge in it from that little charger. I probably should have put the big charger on it since I did leave the key on and drain the battery down. Um, but we'll uh, probably put the big charger on it. Even with the big charger, it would kick back hard to start, so um, it should still be a good test, even with that, to uh, see if it's gonna crank over and start better. All right, here's the moment of truth. I got the battery charger on. Now, even with the battery charger on it, um, and it wouldn't crank over without the battery charger, because like I said, that battery's completely dead, but uh, Previously, even with the battery charger on it, it would still kick back, and that'd be hard to start. The starter just didn't have the power to do it. So let's see how it... I don't know. Choke. Hundred times better. Oh, we do want to check, make sure our ground cable is still tight. And it is. And it, this one, it grounds to the block. Oh, and let me show you that lug that was broken off. Hang on. Or the. Hang on. Well, I told you all this. Uh, this thing had a. See, it broke off one of the little the feet the mounting lugs on the block broke off but this you see the block separates here so if I can find this bottom half of the motor I'll uh, change it out but for now I keep an eye on those three bolts and they've been it's been like that for about a year and it's staying tight so we're going to call this one fixed. Now I think before I get it all back together, I think I'll go ahead and do an oil change on it. Before I do an oil change, I'm going to let it run a little bit, let the oil kind of get circulated and warmed up, and then I'll drain the oil. and. Uh, Put some fresh oil in it. And this motor does not have an oil filter. So, no oil filter to change. Thanks for watching. Alright, all done. And I found a bolt to go where that one was missing. Or I think it was actually missing here. Put it over there. So, just 
working good. What I'm going to do now is take the big charger off of it and put the um, little trickle charger maintainer on it and that'll finish charging it up overnight and we'll be ready to mow tomorrow. So thanks for watching.